to it. Here we go. We can call this meeting to order. Now I uh, think we do have a quorum. Uh, clerk, would you please call the roll? Scotland Johnson? Toby Johnson? Colin? Ferris? Here. Castanis? Here. Fletcher? Here. Strang? Here. Pope? Here. Uh, this meeting of the Sacramento Metropolitan Cable Television Commission is being videotaped in its entirety and will be cable cast without interruption on Metro Cable 65, the Government Affairs Channel, on the Sacramento Cable System. Today's meeting can be seen on Sunday at 7 p.m. and will be repeated again Monday at 10 a.m. Members of the audience who wish to address the commission, uh, please fill out this little green form that you see there, and they're in the back, uh, and submit them to the clerk up here, please, so we can make sure that you uh, are called on. When you do come up to address, make sure you speak directly into the mic, uh, so we can all hear and identify yourself. Um, we're not going to do this yet. Uh, I think we'll just proceed right, uh, right away with item number one. Um, Oh, use your green slip got here just in time. <laughs> Where would I be without the green card, right? Yeah. <laughs> just have a brief report for you today. I understand you have uh, some pretty in interesting things to deal with after the meeting today, so we'll go right along. Yeah. You all have a copy of uh, what was passed out? I guess it's coming up right now. Our latest uh, original programming statistics. We'll try to always update this for you every quarter to show you, you what uh, is going on there to... Uh, help uh, uh, allay the, or the fears of some of us and some of the, and sort of to uh, uh, compete against the statements of people who thought this was going to be just a flash in the pan, the use of public access. As you can see from the latest figures here, we continue to see growth happening. We had another record quarter, even for the summer months, we still had 457 programs uh, produced, which uh, brings us now to a total of uh, well, actually, through September of 1989, of, of over 3,600 programs. can update that a little bit. As of the end of last week, that's the first four weeks of October, there were another 160 programs presented, right. which uh, for this year now puts us up to 1,530, which far outstrips last year's total for the whole year. We still have a couple of months to go. So uh, I'm sure this week the 3,800th program was turned in because we had 3,796 original programs since we started. As you also, I'm going to start showing you some comparisons uh, of, of the current year versus the previous year in my reports. As it shows there in the bottom of the page, we've had a 66% increase in the number of original programs presented uh, for the same time period, January through September of last year. And the total hours of programming represented by that is an increase of 54%. So. We haven't seen anything yet, folks. It just continues to increase, and we're going to keep riding this incredible wave. So I guess something's going on right over there. Outstanding. Also, just want to let you briefly know that a week from tonight is our first annual, or it will be the 1989 Sacramento Community Video Awards. I believe each of you has been invited to attend. We've heard from a couple of you. It's uh, going to be, again, Thursday, November 9 at the Crest Theater. The reception at 6 o'clock, the doors will open to the auditorium or the theater at 7.30 for the ceremony to begin at 8 o'clock, which will feature live entertainment. And we're going to have a full movie screen projection, projection, that is, of video clips from our finalists and winners of this uh, contest. Dick Cable, of course, will be the MC of this event. <laughs> yuck, yuck. We also were quite happy with the fact that we had uh, half a dozen major sponsors for this event, which included the Sacramento Bee, the Sacramento Community Center, the California Cable Television Association, Sacramento Cable, the McGeorge School of Law, and Chevron USA also contributed some very significant uh, either cash or in-kind services for us. In addition, five local companies also contributed items to be included in each winner's award package, things like videotape to each winner, that kind of stuff. 109 entries were uh, viewed by 29 judges who were primarily people who are of the instructor pool, and they selected the 15 category winners and two 
best programs of all the winners that were produced by community volunteers and all those that were produced by media professionals. And the event's going to be videotaped, of course, and will be presented on November 19 at 6.30 on Channel 47. And then all the finalists will be cable cast on Channel 47 from November 12th through the 17th, beginning at 6.30 for the entire evening of programming. So they have a chance to see some of the best of the best. And that's about it. Any questions? Yes. How are you going to go from uh, three quarter inch videotape to 70 millimeters film that night? Well, we won't go to film. There is a, such a thing called a video projector. That, of course, you know of video projectors that are quite small, but this one's going to be a thing called a, that GE makes for industrial type purposes called a Teleria. So it and this thing is, tape. it'll be a direct exactly. from videotape into this incredible projection system. I guess it typically costs about $50,000. We were able to get a very nice break on the rental fee from a local company. And uh, so, again, we'll fill the screen at the Crest Theater with clips. And there's been also some very interesting things done with our little Amiga uh, computer graphic system to, uh, well, I won't tell you what that looks like yet, but I'm blown away by what some of the staff has done so far. So it'll be direct video projection, not converting to film first. Good. Any other questions? Thank well, you very much, Randy. You bet. Okay, um, item number two, uh, we have, uh, I guess the staff report is pretty self-explanatory. Um, we do need to, I guess, uh, adopt the uh, uh, programming plan uh, for 8990. Um, I don't know, does, does anybody have any questions of Rich on the uh, staff report? Um, do I then hear a, a resolution, I mean a motion regarding the programming plan? I move to adopt. Okay. Uh, moved by uh, Mr. Fletcher, second by Ms. Ferris. Uh, any questions? Does anybody in the audience want to speak to us at all about the staff report of the programming plan? Okay, clerk, please call the roll. That's great. Herbie Johnson? Yes. Ferris? Whatever you ask Aye. for, Diane. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Bannis? Aye. Fletcher? Yes. Yeah. Strain? Aye. Yeah. Pope? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Item number three. Um, we've uh, received a uh, status report. Um, unless there's any questions of the uh, commission members uh, to the staff uh, i think it would be well we have a hearing that we need to continue until next time to set for this date uh, as we continue to monitor the state bill any questions uh, can i have a motion then to continue the uh, hearing to next uh, meeting move that we continue the hearing to the december meeting Second. Uh, moved by uh, Mr. Cassano, second by Mr. Johnson. Uh, any other questions of Kenneth Commission members? Members of the public uh, wish to address us regarding it? Uh, clerk, please call the roll. Yeah, Nick. Just two very quick words of thanks, Chris, to Rich for uh, help uh, in Tulsa getting uh, three different difficult uh, joint trench areas online. And secondly, for his help with the CADA. Uh, apartments downtown and finally getting those moving toward the construction, and that's largely due to Rich. Third, to thank Bell for responding very quickly with our applications. Good. Okay. Thank you very much, Dick. Um, any other comments? Clerk, please call the roll. Toby Johnson? Yes. Ferris? Aye. Tristana? Aye. Fletcher? Yes. String? Aye. Oh. Yes. Okay, item number four is a uh, transfer ownership by uh, Pacific Pack. Uh, the um, staff report on the item I think is pretty self-explanatory. Are there any questions from commission members uh, regarding this uh, application? It'll go to uh, People's Choice, is that correct? Well, I'm not, I don't know what their name is going to be called, but it's going to all be joined together to it's one. It's a combination name. Pacific West Cable at People's Choice Company is the new title. It'll be entitled People's? Pacific West Cable at People's Choice Company. Uh, I, I would move approval of the merger transfer. Moved by Mr. Strain. Second. Second by Ms. Ferris. Uh, any other questions? Anybody in the audience want to address the uh, commission? 
Clerk, please call the roll. Toby Johnson? Yes. Ferris? Aye. Castanis? Aye. Fletcher? Yes. String? Aye. Pope? Yes. Um, any member of the public wish to address the commission on any matters not on the agenda? Did we, okay. May I address you? Well, I don't know. Um, I think you'd like to hear about this because this is your uh, last session uh, as chairman of the Cable Commission. We're going to present you with this weighty memento of your time as chairman and uh, appreciation for service as chairperson 1989. So, Councilman Douglas N. Pope, you're now free to roam as you please on the first Thursday at 2.30, and congratulations. Oh, well, thank you very much. I thought I'd railroad us through that one. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, and I appreciate the help, though, especially the staff. Is, uh, Rich and then Bob before you, Rich and Brent, uh, they really make this whole thing happen. Keep us all running. And so far, uh, we've been out of trouble. <laughs> I've only been on the commission a short period of time, but Doug, I think you added a great deal to the to the commission, your logical mind, your legal mind uh, oh. kept us uh, going in the right direction. I uh, appreciate, really appreciate your input. Thank you. And leadership. It's been enjoyable. Are you an Octavia next time? No. Is that right? I may, uh, I just may come over to file a bunch of green slips. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Doug, for all your help. It was very helpful. Well, thank you, Doug. Well, let me add my commendation for all that. Good work we've done over the years, not only on this commission, but as a city councilman and as a friend of the Board of Supervisors. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Sir. It's been a good time. Can't trade it for anything. Okay, um, we'll move on to our executive session uh, where we have some weighty matters still to discuss. Oh, I have to read this thing. Uh, yes, the Metropolitan Cable Television Commission shall now recess to close session to confer uh, with and receive advice from his legal counsel regarding pending litigation and or potential litigation with Pacific West Cable Company, Cable America, Eugenia Iacopi, uh, United Cable Television Corporation, and public entity insurers pursuant to California Government Code Sections 5, 4, 9, 6.9 sub and sub 1. Mr. Senator, we'd like to uh, advise the audience that we may be returning to action after the exec session. Yes, we will be returning after our executive session. Okay. I'm going to be upstairs. It's upstairs. Yes. Okay. After discussing uh, several of the, uh, the outstanding lawsuits that we have, uh, I don't know, Rich, um, should we take public testimony now or? Why don't you let Brent make his presentation? Well, just, well, yeah, I can okay. just put a brief presentation on the record, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman and members, we're recommending to you today that you approve and recommend to the constituent entities the adoption and implementation of a tentative settlement reached with the principles of Pacific West and a partial settlement of the uh, insurance litigation reached with some, though not all, of the insurers. Specifically, we recommended a settlement which would settle five cases presently pending, three in the federal district court in Sacramento and two in the superior court. They are Pacific West versus City of Sacramento, 83-1034 in the federal district court, Pacific West versus Folsom in the Sacramento Superior Court, now pending in the district court of appeal, Pacific West versus Galt, 83-1595, Pacific West versus City of Sacramento, most often referred to by us as Pacific West II, that's an 88-495 case in the United States District Court in the Eastern District of uh, California. And Yacobi versus City of Folsom, a case pending in the Sacramento Superior Court. It is unrelated and does not pertain to the last remaining case, which is being settled by a different agreement uh, entitled United versus County of Sacramento. Specifically, the basic terms, as we've discussed them in some detail with you, are as follows. The settlement of the six cases is conditioned upon a payment of six million dollars uh, by the uh, public entities that's buying through the commission and certain changes by the constituent entities which we encourage you to recommend to the constituent entities. Effectively and conceptually these changes, though not yet written, will cover the following matters. 
Specifically, they will retain license fees at 5% of gross revenues and appropriate auditing provisions related thereto. They will relate, they will retain public educational and governmental access channel space requirements uh, as presently set forth in the licensing ordinance and allowed by the Cable Act. Uh, three, they will retain uniform service and pricing provisions, but will not retain universal service provisions of the licensing ordinance. Fourth, they will retain the bonding requirement at the present levels of the franchise ordinance, 2.5 million and 1 million after completion of construction. But two things will be different. Number one, they will apply at the start of construction of the cable system, that being defined as the actual laying of cable or installation of electronics, whichever is earlier, but not, for example, the laying of empty conduit in joint trenches uh, in subdivision areas. If there were empty conduit laid in public streets, that would be covered. It'll all be spelled out, but those are the conceptual provisions. Five, liability insurance, naming the public entities as additional named insurance will also be retained. The term of the licensing ordinance will be modified, licenses issued but under the licensing ordinance, from five years to 20 years to correspond with the franchise ordinance and complete transferability similar to that granted in the a franchise ordinance would be retained. We would eliminate all of the provisions of the licensing ordinance pertaining to system design, pertaining to construction procedures and completion requirements. Those would henceforth be handled through the ordinary police power uh, powers of the respective departments of public works of the entities. We would eliminate the security deposit, which is presently $250,000 prior to completion in the franchise ordinance and $100,000 thereafter. We would remove application fee requirements and map submission requirements from the uh, application process of the licensing ordinance. Additionally, as conditions of this settlement, it would be a condition that the uh, principles of Pacific West and each of them, including without limitation, Messrs. Benvenuti, Fight, Hansen, Jacobi, Farrow, and any of their agents, attorneys, or employees upon request, execute full and complete releases of any claims against any of the public entities arising out of either the franchise ordinance or the licensing ordinance known to them or which reasonably could have been known to them as of the date of the settlement. Those releases are to be in a form approved by council. Finally, uh, this settlement is subject to a good faith determination by the United States District Court in the PacWest 2 case, uh, the 88-495 case. Uh, I've contacted Judge Schwartz, and uh, we're going to have some difficulty getting into his courtroom because of his crowded calendar, but he's assured us through his clerk that he will do all that he can to, to assist us in the scheduling of such a hearing. That is necessary, and his condition, condition of this settlement is that his ruling is such as to cut off cross-claims from the Scripps Howard defendants in that suit. Uh, additionally, the uh, insurers who are settling with us and pursuant to this uh, settlement, we're also recommending a settlement with the California Insurance Guarantee Association for a dismissal in a protective case of, for the amount of $500,000 the settlement with the Protective National Insurance Company of Omaha, Nebraska in the amount of $850,000, the settlement with those entities uh, uh, which are upper layer uh, excess errors and omissions insurers as well as industrial indemnity and CSAC EIA for a total sum of $300,000, a settlement with Illinois Union Insurance Company for $25,000. These settlements are subject to a good faith determination in a superior court case entitled Protect, uh, County of Sacramento et al. versus Protective National Insurance Company. Uh, additionally, as a condition of the settlement, the federal court deposit in lieu of supersedious bond in the amount at the time it was deposited of $759,000, presently amounting to $815,000, will be released to the public entities and will become part of the funding of this overall settlement. That settlement, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman and members, uh, is recommended, and I have uh, reviewed that settlement with the County Council, the City Attorney of Sacramento, and the City Attorney of Folsom, and its broad general outlines with the City Attorney of Gulf, 
and that recommendation carries their full concurrence. Uh, it is therefore my recommendation that we enter into that settlement, approve it in principle, authorize me to negotiate with the respective uh, attorneys to draft all necessary settlement documents, and further recommend the ordinance changes to the constituent entities so that we may begin that process, uh, so that hopefully we can bring this entire process to a conclusion prior to December 31, 1989. Further, uh, that you authorize me to continue to prosecute vigorously the remaining insurers who have thus far denied and refused and neglected to fulfill their contractual requirements toward the public entities. That would be our recommendation, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, are there any uh, questions or comments from uh, commission members at this point? I have a question. Uh, okay. Uh, I want to make it uh, perfectly clear and state again, uh, Rich, that the grantees will be able to function with the uh, dollar allocation that this commission has awarded all of the grantees for the life of their contracts under their initial agreement. Is that in jeopardy or not? It is not in jeopardy, Mr. Sanders. And they will be able to function with the amount of money that we've indicated they would be able to have. As we discussed, the projections now are solid at 100% of current base with a projected 4% CPI throughout the litigation term we've discussed here. Uh, and how long is their, their contracts? They have contracts for how they long? They have year? ongoing contracts with a renewal each year. They're annual and renewable each year? That's correct. You have a one-year legal obligation to them because of the pendency of the litigation. Moral and political obligations are to be distinguished there. But we do do them annually, as I remember. That's, That's right. right. The only question I have is for both. Okay, thank you. Um, can I ask a question? Yes, Jim. What was the implication of the construction and completion referred to? Yeah, so, uh, Commissioner, the, the effect of it is currently the franchise ordinance has a requirement that the franchisee, in this case Scripps Howard, complete the entire area. That would be unaffected until such time as the franchise ordinance was adjusted at the time this uh, settlement was implemented. <coughs> However, the franchisee, as, as I'm sure the Commission recalls, had a legal obligation to complete their construction on or before March 23, 1989, some six, seven months ago. Their obligation and their failure, if any, to complete it in that time to be discussed and, dis and uh, deliberated by the commission in the public hearing that was just continued prior to our executive session is legally unaffected, not affected by any change we make in the licensing ordinance now. Of course, if, such, if we made such a change and eliminated the requirement before we concluded those hearings, it could have an effect. But I anticipate because of the progress we're going to make, we're going to conclude, uh, and, and certainly your director is going to have a recommendation to you regarding resolving their completion difficulties. Once, however, this is installed in the licensing ordinance and uh, transfers its effect thereby into the franchise ordinance as well, there will no longer be a specific requirement that a cable licensee such as Pacific West or for that matter additional franchisees such as Scripps Howard would have to complete construction of any specific area. In effect, the Commission would be relying upon market forces to direct that into new areas as they become available. I would point out that it's your director's view and mine as well that in new areas you really have no difficulty attracting cable operators because the penetration tends to be higher and the costs are lower. The, the uh, goal of the completion requirements that, that your constituent entities adopted in 1983 have largely been met by the careful application of those requirements. And so those, ap those requirements would disappear, but I suspect that the effect would be transparent. Uh, thank you. Any other questions from commission members? Uh, Jim? Please uh, identify yourself for the record. <laughs> My name is uh, Jim Kirschman. I'm at 9857 Horn Road, Sacramento. And uh, I want to say to this commission, you're very fortunate this morning. Your attorney is still talking to you. Mine is not <laughs> <laughs> speaking to me. We had to uh, settle this thing without his consent and his approval. But nevertheless, that was something that the principals wanted to do. And so it was accomplished. And we appreciate very much 
the efforts of, of your staff, especially Rich Esposto, in, in making sure that this thing was, was done properly. And uh, Brenton Blair is, is a nice guy, but he's an attorney, and we have to, you know, <laughs> keep that in mind at all times. Uh, <laughs> One of the things that, that I'm very appreciative of is the fact that we can now get on get on with the business that we're really interested in doing, and that is providing the people of this community with a real choice in cable television. As of today, we have 13 satellite channels available. That, along with our uh, over-the-air channels, we will have a very good package to present people beginning in just the next few weeks. And uh, we think it's exciting, and we think it's something that that is going to be very, very appreciated by this community, and we're hoping that, you know, we don't have to ignore you now because we're not adversaries in litigation. Instead, we can start working together and, and accomplishing some things that I think will be helpful to everybody. Uh, the, um, the only other thing I would like to add with regard to the summary that was just given is that we hope, we hope that we will be given a summary of the ordinance changes and be given an opportunity to, re to review those and make any presentations we may wish to to the various communities as a result of that hearing process. But I think other than that, uh, everything is as we've discussed and we're just very happy that we're at this point and hope we can get on with some bigger and better things. If there's any questions you have of, of me or uh, of, of the parties involved through me, uh, I'm here to, uh, to acknowledge them. Uh, you know, as you all know, one of my associates in this matter is is a little guy named Joe Benvenuti, and he's very, very happy that this has resulted in a in a, a settlement that we can all live with, and is anxious to get on with with doing some bigger and better things. What's your phone number? What's my phone? <laughs> well, you've uh, invited us to communicate with I'm, you. If we I'm have over any... cable television. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know, but there are many phone numbers. I'm just curious what yours is. Well, Mine personally or well, for... for communication purposes. All right. If, you, well. if somebody needs to get a hold of me, I can give you my number. Sure. It's 366-5696. Well, I, I wouldn't ask you to give any home phone numbers uh, over. No, that's my business number. Okay. In the last week, I've had Jim's work, both work numbers, phone number and car number. We've used them all in the last four or five nights. Okay. We can reach them. Uh, any other questions from commission members? I want to thank, thank you very much, Jim. I want to thank Jim for uh, helping get this thing put to bed. Let's Good. get on with cable television and get out of the courts. Great. Let's do it. Thank you. Great. Uh, is there a uh, motion from the... <laughs> Commission. I'll move staff's uh, legal uh, legal staff's presentation to settle the uh, five lawsuits that have been outlined to us. Moved by Mr. Cassano. Second. Second by Mr. Johnson. Um, before we vote on it, though, I would just like to say thanks for to all of them, Terry, especially. I mean, you played a very important role in getting this thing to its conclusion. I was not here, and uh, but she's played a very important role, of course, Brent and. Rich, uh, you've played very important roles in it, and thank you very much, Jim, for, for the role you've played, and I know you've had a difficult path. We, we all have had a difficult path. Uh, I never thought I'd see the end of this. Well, it's not <laughs> over yet. We know that, <laughs> but at least we've gotten past. We know there's a place we can all agree. If we can just get the lawyers to all agree now. <laughs> um, and so I'm very happy to have this thing over with. I don't think I could find a better way to end my term on the uh, commission. It's uh, very pleasing. It's a big fitting way to the chairperson. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Very fitting. I just thought uh, I missed this. I, I could have used another date out of San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that motion was in concept? It is in concept. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Brent, you got a... Just to one thing, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first of all, I want to assure Mr. Kirschman that, indeed, it is our plan before anything goes to the constituent entities uh, for action to share them with uh, uh, Mr. Farrow, his attorney of record, and uh, through Mr. Esposto with Mr. Kirschman as well. So we intend to coordinate the, the drafting of that. We're tight. And I want to thank uh, the chairman as well as uh, Commissioner Collin the money. for uh, dropping everything on several occasions and taking a day to go with us uh, right. to the settlement it's conferences, crazy. which ultimately brought loose, and we're I very thankful for that. Good. And, uh, Look forward to seeing uh, your system up to run it. Okay, call or roll, please. Hopefully some sort of facilities. Toby Johnson. Plan in place. 
Toby Johnson? Yes, I will. <laughs> <laughs> Ferris? Aye. Costanis? Aye. Fletcher? Aye. String? Aye. Oh. Yes. Motion carried. Uh, no other business to come before the commission? Not a bit. He's adjourned. Uh,